Hey, welcome. I'm Laura Lai of Namaste Yoga. This next practice is going to be an advanced vinyasa flow. Let's start sitting today. This should not feel unusual. Take your hands to your knees, move the shoulders into place, whatever you need to do to adjust your seated position so that it, you feel like you're just you're comfortable enough that you could stay for a few minutes. Close the eyes. And although we want to attempt to get the best alignment we can going into this pose, once we get there, we don't want to do a ton of like fidgeting and adjusting and constantly rethinking our positioning. Ideally, we want to just then be still. Still does not equal tense. Still isn't necessarily no movement, but it's not, we want to avoid like intentional fidgeting. So, you know, as soon as you come to stillness and someone says, don't move, all of a sudden you really have to scratch your nose. And look, I am not there. I'm not going to stop you from scratching your nose. If it happens, it happens. But sometimes it's worth the exercise of seeing what happens if you just allow yourself to do nothing. Notice the impulse to fidget. Notice what happens if you don't respond to it. It's an exercise. The movement that does occur in the body is the movement of the breath. So that's going to continue to move in and out and it will affect your body. As we inhale, our lungs expand, our diaphragm drops down, our belly tends to um, expand. Shoulders might lift a little bit. As we exhale, the opposite happens. So that movement is going to continue to occur but we're not adding anything extraneous. Just take a minute here. Now that you've gotten a little more still, a little more quiet, perhaps a little more focused, choose an intention for your practice. It can be anything you want. I encourage things like practicing with balance or practicing with ease or practicing with a sense of joy. Um, but I'm sure you can come up with much better suggestions and ideas. Something that just is going to be in your mind as you practice that will keep you going, maybe keep you a little bit motivated, and maybe even suggest to you the way in which to practice. If you're practicing for exercise, it's going to be very different than if you're practicing for relaxation, even if you're doing the exact same movements. So open the eyes and we'll go ahead and shift to tabletop. So uncross the legs and take your hands on the floor, shoulders set up over the wrists, hips over knees. So this is good old cat-cow setup. We're going to start to move the body with the breath. Inhale to cow pose, exhale to cat pose. These first few, you might feel stiff or tight. I know I always do at first. It's like, wow, have I ever moved my spine before? But after you start to move a few times, and it only might be a few, you start to realize, oh yeah, that range of motion is still there. It just takes a second for it to warm up. So go ahead and let yourself explore the range of motion as it feels right. Following the breath here as well, so begin your ujjayi practice. Ideally, we want that to carry through the whole practice until we get to the very end. And then come on back to center, tuck your right toes under and slide the ball of the right foot toward the back of the mat, push through the heel, reach the head away, nice and long through the spine, and then stabilizing through the center of the body, lift the right toes off the floor, and then see if you can find balance and lift the left arm off the floor with the palm in. Level it out, so think of the low ribs here and try to lift up a little bit there so that you're not sagging your low back. And then exhale, elbow, nose, knee, curling everything in. Inhale, extend out. Exhale, tuck. 
Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, contract one more time. Inhale, reach out, and then you can hold, or if you're able, bend the right knee, reach back with the left hand for the foot, pull the heel away from the hip. So think, think about pulling up a little bit, so it feels like almost a bow pose with just the one hand. Gaze forward, and then release hand and knee back to the floor, and we'll just switch sides. So tuck the left toes, press the heel towards the back of the mat, Keep reaching the head forward, and notice even here the low back, if you tend to sway your low back, pull your navel up, lift your low ribs, so engage through the center. Pick up the left toes and then reach the right arm out. Find your balance by steadying the gaze on one point. Exhale, tuck in. Inhale, reach away. Exhale, contract. Inhale, extend. And then one more time, exhale in, inhale out. And then if you did on the first side, bend that knee, reach back with the hand for the foot, pull up and away. Maybe a little gaze forward, so the gaze might have been down before, but now you can lift it. And then hand and knee back to the floor. Let's go right to downward facing dog. First down dog, give yourself a little time to warm it up. Bend one knee, let the opposite leg straighten. Switch to your other side. Take your time here as you move through the legs, but keep rooting down through the hands, lifting up through the hips, maybe leaning the chest back. Breathe. And then lift up both heels. Maybe walk the feet together a little closer. Let's take the right leg into the air. Lift the leg, open the hips, stretch the toes for the ceiling. Nice and long. Reach through the foot and then look forward between the hands. Step your right foot all the way to the front of the mat. Keep the fingers on the floor. Reach the head away from the heel. Nice high lunge here. So the back knee is lifted. So we're in a high lunge even before the body comes up. Now when we bring the torso up, we can come all the way to crescent pose. Front knee stays over ankle, hips are level, the back heel stays lifted, upright through the torso, and then you can take the arms up as you lunge deep, breathing. Energy through fingers, steady your gaze. And then let's just take the hands to the floor and come to plank. So starting off simple, shoulders over wrists, reach through the head, reach through the heel. Heels, plural. And then let's lower to the floor. Maybe those knees want to come down first on this first one. If you want, you can take chaturanga though. Inhale. Let's just come up and go down a couple times. So inhaling up to cobra. Relax the glutes, exhale, roll your, your torso back down. Inhale, press yourself up. Exhale, lower yourself down. Inhale, push down, rise up. Exhale, slowly lowering down. And then you can come up to one last cobra or you could walk your hands back a little bit, roll on up, and then push down, press the tops of the feet down, and come all the way to up dog. Make sure those feet haven't gone too wide. Mine tend to want to widen. Heart forward. So if you're in up dog, none of the legs are on the floor, not the knees, not the thighs, just the tops of the feet. If you're not in up dog, then the entire leg is on the floor. Your thighs, your knees, even your hips are almost touching the floor. So we don't want to be in this place where the thighs are lifted but the knees are down because we're not really backbending here. So choose one or the other, but really there's not an in-between between those two poses. They should both be backbending poses. Then move yourself to downward facing dog and let's switch to the other leg. So once again, lift the heels up, stay on the right foot, take the left leg into the air, reach through the foot. Stretch it on up. And then step the foot forward between the hands, all the way up so that your knee ends up over your ankle, nice and strong. Reach through the back heel. Really uh, get the legs, the framework of this pose going so that then when you decide to come all the way up to crescent, the legs don't really move at all. That's already set and stable. The upper body can come up. 
the arms can reach. Energy through that back heel, lunge into that front knee, squaring forward. Breathe. And then hands to the floor. Let yourself step back to plank again. And here, if you want to, you can take knees down first, or you can lower chaturanga. So now the knees and thighs never touch down. You roll over the feet to the tops of them and come to up dog. Otherwise, you can take your knees to the floor, come all the way down and do a cobra. But the transition from a chaturanga to up dog does not involve the knees touching the floor. At least that's the goal. Roll over the feet now, lift the hips. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathe. And then on an inhale, look to the front of your mat as you exhale, step, walk, or if you want, you could lightly hop those feet forward. Have the feet about hip distance apart, soften your knees. Let the upper body hang down. Nice ragdoll here, just a simple forward fold over the legs. Let the upper body hang free. You can loosen up the back of the neck, maybe even bounce the knees a little. and then walking the feet together. Bring your big toes to touch. Keep the heels slightly apart. Bend the knees and roll up to standing. So the head should hang heavy as you start to stack your spine. The shoulders come into place and then head comes up last. Engage the legs, root down through the feet. Take the arms out and up on an inhale. Exhale, palms together in front of the heart. Press them, close the eyes. Tune into your ujjayi breath. We're gonna go into some sun A's, really just to get the whole body synced up with the breath and warmed up. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Exhale, forward folding, Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Good, flat back. Exhale, plant the palms, step to plank, lower, either lowering chaturanga or take knees to the floor and everything comes down. Inhale, up dog or cobra, up to you, which you want to use. Exhale, down dog and hold for a few breaths here. Rooting the hands down, lifting the hips up, melting the heart back towards your thighs. Don't worry if the legs never straighten, but if your hamstrings are open, you can start to straighten the legs and drop the heels to the floor. Hips are still reaching to the sky. Pull your navel up and into your body. So get a little Uddiyana Bandha, that abdominal lock, where we're always slightly toning up in that core area. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, bend the knees and step or lightly hop up. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold down deep, reverse the swan dive, come on up. Exhale, palms together in front of the heart. Let's keep flowing. Inhale, one breath per movement. Follow your own breathing pace, rhythm. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, high to low plank. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Just one inhale this time in down dog. Exhale, step or lightly hop it forward. Inhale to lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, root down to come up. Exhale, palms together. Again, inhale. Find your rhythm. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One inhale, exhale, make it forward again. Inhale and exhale, fold. Inhale, come on up. Let's do two more. So I'm gonna stop cueing just so you really have an opportunity to focus on your own breath, your own practice, what's going on on your own mat. We'll do two more full rounds.
those rounds, we'll meet back at the top of the mat. So take your time. Follow through. Continue in the same rhythm. Once you're back at the top of the mat, palms together in front of the heart. Stand. Maybe close the eyes again. And then we're going to inhale, reach the arms out and up. And as we exhale, we're going to move to a prayer twist. So we're going to bend the knees and reach the hips back, taking the left elbow outside of the right knee. Push the top palm down into the bottom. Reach the head away from the tail. Feet are together. Knees should also be side by side. And then from here, we're going to stand on the right foot and step just the left foot to the back of the mat. Keep your twist as you're doing this. Keep a gazing point for yourself to help with the balance. Reach through the back heel. You can keep the palms pressing, or if you want, choose to fly the arms open. Extend. And then let's float up. Reaching up, reaching forward with the left fingers, back with the right. Extend, extend, extend. Get the shoulders to stack over the hips. Front knee is still over ankle. And then we're going to go to a side plank on the left. So we're going to move that left hand down to the floor inside the right foot. Keep the right arm up as you roll to the outer edge of the left foot and then step the right foot back. You can modify this as well. So if it's a little easier for you, you could put the right foot on the floor and you want it to come straight up, the leg to come straight up for the hip and the knee is right over the ankle. So your toes might be off the mat or you can take the full version if that works. Tuck your hips into the pose, then turn to the floor. Make your way through a vinyasa here. This is a vinyasa practice, so expect the vinyasa to keep coming, but you don't have to take them all. If you want to skip them, just go right to down dog, take an extra breath there to rest. Stay with your ujjayi. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, step or hop the feet to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, folding down, reverse swan dive, come on up, inhale. We're gonna go right to the twist on the other side. So exhale, palms together, right elbow outside of the left leg. So I'm turning away from you here. Actually, let me just step to the other side of the mat so it's a little better. Push that top palm down. Keep your feet, feet together so then the knees should also be side by side. Don't let the right knee shoot forward to the left. And then leaning on your left leg, Step your right foot back. Do the best you can. Keep a gazing point to help with that transition. Maybe scooch it back further if it didn't go back far enough, and then fly the arms open. Inhale, float on up, and the arms reach away from each other. So right fingers forward, left fingers back. Get the shoulders to stack over the hips as best you can. So we're like almost like in a twisted warrior two. And then we're gonna take the right hand down to the floor. Thinking about side plank, keep those arms in line with each other if you can as you transition. So rolling to the outer edge of your right foot, move the left foot, either just the halfway back position for modifying or stack the inner edges of the feet, lift the hips. Maybe the gaze looks up to your top thumb. And then turn to the floor. Here's another vinyasa, vinyasa opportunity. It is optional, as is everything in the practice, right? So take it all with what, you know, take what you want, leave the rest. It's sort of tried and true, I guess. Root down, breathe. And if down dog is not restful enough for you, you can take knees to the floor and hips to the heels. Give yourself a child's pose. That's always a good place to go if you just need a breath. Just need a moment, just need a break. Don't hesitate. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, bend the knees and step or lightly hop forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, folding deep. Let's come to chair pose now. So just straight forward, knees towards toes, hips straight down, navel in, and then arms come up alongside the ears. Breathe a little zigzag, but don't zig too much with the upper body. We're thinking more of the zigzag in the legs and then the hips slightly go down. One more inhale. Exhale, forward fold. 
Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, take a vinyasa here. We're just going to downward facing dog. We're gonna to start to just add on to our sequence. So from down dog, take the right leg into the air, but keep your hip nice and square. Toes are flexed down. So earlier, we, re we let the leg go really high. Now we're trying to keep the leg in the line that is already created by the arms and the torso. Now knee to chest, shoulders forward over the wrist, hold for a couple breaths. Inhale, lift that leg back up. Exhale, knee to the right arm, hover it by your right try. Inhale, down dog splits. Exhale, knee to the left arm, hover by the try, hold briefly here. And then we're gonna kick the leg through under the left arm and then take the left hand up into the air and open up. Sort of a variation on a side plank here, a little twisted. One more inhale, exhale, hand to the floor. Inhale, sweep the right leg back, up, down dog, split, and exhale, step the foot forward between the hands. This time, pivot the back heel down. Let's take a warrior one, front knee over the ankle. Come on up, lunge deep, but still drive your left hip forward and move your right hip back. Or can you even think of moving your right thigh, thigh bone towards the back of your mat. Take the arms up, gaze forward. Let's take the hands behind the back. So we're just gonna do a nice little stretch here. Pull your shoulder blades together and down. If you have a hard time clasping your hands together, A, you could skip it. You could just put your hands at your waist or you could just grab something between them, a little towel or a t-shirt or something like that. We're gonna fold. Keep your back heel down, let the torso rest on your thigh, or drop it inside your leg if you can. Let the arms reach up and over. Weight of the head is hanging down towards the floor. And then inhale, come back up. Just make your way back up one more breath. Exhale, hands to the floor, move through vinyasa, come back to downward facing dog. We're gonna do the same thing for the second leg. So once you reach downward facing dog, take the left leg into the air. Nice and square here. So a little bit of effort to put the, push the hands down, lift the hips up and then the leg reaches away. The toes stay flexed down. Now knee to chest, shoulders forward over the wrist, hug your knee in, keep reaching through head and heel. Inhale, lift your leg. Exhale, knee to the left arm, so on the same side. Inhale, take it up. And then exhale, knee to the right, so a little twist. Hold, stabilize, and then we'll kick it through and do the same thing we did on the first side. Edge of the foot to the floor, take the right arm up and twist open. Maybe let the head fall back. One more inhale, exhale, hand to the floor, inhale, left leg into the air, exhale, step it to the front of the mat, back heel pivots down, come on up, set up your warrior one. We want the hips to be square, so that's why driving the left hip back or the left thigh bone towards the back of your mat is gonna help. And then the right hip we wanna have move forward because the tendency is really the opposite because that back heel is down and the back leg is back. The tendency is for the right hip to want to move back with the leg. Take the arms up. And then hands behind the back and we'll take our variation. So nice fold. This arm variation is getting into the shoulders, but obviously when we fold here and we're staying in our lunge, we're working into the hips. So we get to work both of those big sets of joints here. Let the head hang down off the neck. You know, you might even find that head, it starts to drop down by your calf or even your ankle. Allow that front knee to continue to bend. Try to keep the hips square if possible, which means not letting the left hip move forward into the side. 
and then float back up. One more breath, good, strong, solid warrior one. Exhale, hands to the floor, take yourself through a vinyasa or just go straight to downward facing dog if that's what you prefer. Take a resting breath or two in down dog or child's pose if you need the child's pose. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, bend the knees to step or lightly hop those feet forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold deep. Bend the knees, coming to your chair. We're just gonna add on little by little here now. So from Utkatasana, exhale, fold right back to Uttanasana. Inhale, Arda. Make your way through Vinyasa. So again, you can jump to Chaturanga, you can step back and lower, or you could go straight to down dog. So make it more advanced or make it more modified, up to you. From down dog, inhale, right leg up. Exhale, step it forward, back heel down. Inhale, warrior one, and then let's open to warrior two. So adjust your back foot, so now the arch lines up with the front heel, hips and shoulders, front knee over ankle, arms at shoulder height. Look over those front fingertips and let yourself start to deepen the pose moment by moment. Continue to follow the breath, even though it's not really leading your body anywhere, uh, but it is going to help to deepen the pose. So the movement here is much more subtle than when we're transitioning pose to pose, but it's still there. Turn your front palm up. Reverse the warrior, couple breaths here. Still lunging into your front knee. And then hands to the floor, vinyasa. Maybe one-legged chaturanga. So if that feels good to you, that can be a really nice transition to take from down dog. Inhale, take the left leg up. Exhale, step it forward, back heel down. Inhale, starting in warrior one, and then exhale open to warrior two and i'm going to step the other way just to keep facing you front heel and back arch line up hips level shoulders level arms at shoulder height look over those front fingertips and then turn the front palm up take a reverse stretching back Keep pointing your front knee forward, trying to keep it over the toes. Look towards your front, your top fingers. One more inhale and exhale, hands to the floor. Cycling through the vinyasa, maybe one-legged chaturanga, if that feels good to you. And downward facing dog. From down dog, inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, step or hop the feet forward between the hands. Inhale, take a half lift. Exhale, fold down deep. Let's bend the knees and sink the hips. We're gonna come through chair pose. And then we're gonna, um, let's take a twist here. So we're gonna take that twist that we did earlier, but now we're gonna start to sink the hips down. And as you do this, go ahead and pick your heels up. Turning to the right, press your top palm down into the bottom. Really trying to twist the torso here. You can stay here, or if you feel like taking a little side crow today, we can play with that. So you really want to have this left arm outside of the right leg really far, and then root your left hand down along the side edge of your mat, and then the right hand is going to match it. So we're not going this way, right? We're going to the side, side crow, and then we're going to lean in. I'm going to move a little more to the side of my mat just so I don't completely leave the frame here. Lean in, and then the feet can come up off the ground as soon as your weight gets far enough over onto your wrists. And then just put the feet back down, and then, you know, come back to your mat if you came off of it. Inhale, chair pose again. Exhale, forward fold. We're going to go right back into vinyasa. We'll do the other side next time we come through chair pose. Chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. And exhale. Downward facing dog. Inhale, take the right leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Back heel down. Inhale, come on up, warrior one. Exhale, open warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior, and then we're gonna come to triangle. So I'm gonna flip back around here. So we're straightening the front leg, moving towards trikonasana. 
back of the hand against the inner shin, top arm up. So the hand position, the bottom hand in triangle can be a couple of things. You can put it right on your ankle or shin, um, and that's fine, but try not to put too much weight there. And that's why I sometimes suggest back of the hand against, because we're A, not putting weight, but B, we can use the pushing against the shin for a little leverage to lift the top arm. Okay, let's take that top arm and rotate it in, reach it overhead. Strong feet, strong core. Lift the bottom hand up, palms face each other. Let's turn to that front leg. We're gonna to go to warrior three. So bend your front knee, float off the back leg, and come on up. If those arms are drooping, just bring your palms together in front of the heart, or if you don't have room, reach through the hands, reach through the heel. Breathing here. Extending the whole body. And then bend the front knee, step back long, inhale, take warrior one. So we're kind of back where we came from, and we can take a vinyasa. So hands to the floor, move through it. And we'll do the other side. So inhale, take the left leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Back heel goes down. Inhale, warrior one. And I'm going to turn away from this side, but I think you guys got it. So exhale, open to warrior two. Inhale, reverse. Straighten the front leg. And then coming to triangle. Trikonasana. So one of the tricky things about triangle is not letting the hips jut out and the chest move forward. So we're trying to move ourselves into one plane, keeping the sides of the body long, avoiding back bending. There's a bunch of little things here. Look up towards that top thumb, root down through the feet, strong core. Top arm rotates in to come overhead. And then as we pick up the bottom hand, we really need to pay attention to the torso because we should be able to just support it with, even without the hand there. Now go ahead and turn to face your left leg, bend your left knee, float up off the foot, find warrior three here on the second side. Reach through the fingers, reach through the lifted heel. Leveling out with the floor, your body is making the shape of a capital T. Now bend the front knee, step back really long, come to warrior one, and hands to the floor. Here's another vinyasa for you. And downward facing dog. Take a couple resting breaths. Inhale, look to the front of the mat. Exhale, bend the knees, step or lightly hop forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Let's come to chair. And once again, we're going to come back to that twist squat. So I'm just going to move over a little bit. So twisting. This time to the left. So the right arm comes outside of the left leg. Start to squat down, and your heels probably will need to come up off the floor here to stabilize. Then, if you want to try the side crow, really get that right arm outside of the left leg. Plant the right palm along the side of your mat. It might be on the floor off the edge. It's okay. Left comes alongside. As you're leaning, your left thigh is on your right arm, but really there's nothing resting on the left arm. If this is new to you, sometimes people will put their hip on the left elbow, but ultimately there's nothing there. Lean into it. If you're good, you can scissor the legs apart. <laughs> Not me today, so that's okay too. Let's go ahead and let that go, and let's go ahead and just come down to the mat, and we're gonna just take a little bit of boat pose here. So balancing, this little interlude, let's say. Hands behind the thighs, let the chest rise, let the shins come up level with the knees. Take the arms out and breathe. This is some core stability work. Take the feet down, hands behind you. Point the fingers towards your hips, plug your shoulder blades in, press the feet down and take the hips up, chin in, or you could drop that head all the way back. And then get your sit bones to the floor and we'll do another one. Hands behind the thighs, let the shins rise, take the arms out. 
If you want to extend a leg, so you might be able to just do it from here, but you might have to lean back a little bit because this is balance and counterbalance. So if you can come a little more to your tailbone, go ahead and do it, but make sure your heart is still lifted. And then if you've got the legs more straight, just extend the legs down straight. Let's take a reverse plank. Um, turn the fingers out. This is really just for variety in the hands. Um, plug your shoulders in. So make sure those shoulders are integrated into the upper back so that we can really stabilize as we come up. Lift the hips, stay on your heels, point the toes to the ground, chin in, or head drops back. And sit bones back down. Let's go ahead and rock to the feet. Use your hands if you need to. We're going to come back to chair and go back into vinyasa. Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha. And exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. And breathe here. All right, let's take the right leg back up into the air. Just inhale it up, exhale, step it forward. We're gonna start with warrior one. So back heel comes down, inhale, come on up, warrior one. Now we're gonna straighten the front leg, bring your palms together in front of the heart and step the left foot a little closer in. Um, let's see, I'm gonna flip around here. We're gonna go from pyramid to revolve triangle. So if you need a block, this would be a good time to go ahead and find it and I'll tell you where you can how you can use it. But if you don't have one, I'm gonna to try to demonstrate it without a block. So from here, well, just let's bring the hands to the hips. I think this is gonna be helpful. As we start to fold, the back heel is down. Now the feet, notice front to back, they're not as wide as if we were in a high lunge. That front knee is straight, but don't lock your kneecap in. Keep a soft micro bend, but pull your quad up if you can, and try to drive your right thigh deeper into the hip socket. Holding about halfway down, see if you can bring your fingertips to the floor. This is where, if you need a block, put your hand on a block. If you can, get your left fingertips and right fingertips both lined up with the foot on either side and reach the head forward like Ardha Uttanasana. Root through the back heel. Now, just your left fingertips stay down. Right arm floats up. Twisted triangle or revolved triangle. Keep reaching head away from tail. And then we're gonna move from here to revolve half moon. So again, you might wanna use a block for that. The fingers are gonna come forward ahead of the foot. Keep the right leg straight as you start to lift the back heel, lift the back leg, float up into it. Try to keep that leg lifted, reach through the head, reach through the heel. From here, <laughs> Yep, it doesn't end. We're gonna go to revolve to regular old half moon. So we're gonna try to keep that left leg in the air, take the right fingers down, and now rotate, rotate, rotate. Take the left hand off the floor, either bring it to your hip or take it up into the air. Reach through the head, reach through the heel, and turn it the other way. Now as we step back, we're going to step all the way back to warrior two. So bend the front knee, step back, warrior two, inhale, reverse warrior, and then let's go ahead and take an extended side angle. And I'm turning my back here, but I think this is a familiar pose. Top arm overhead, palm faces the floor, knee over ankle. Press the feet down, inhale, reverse warrior, and then hands to the ground. Cycle through a vinyasa, get yourself back to down dog. And breathe. Inhale, take the left leg up. Exhale, step it between the hands. Back heel goes down. So we're starting with warrior one. I'm gonna stay facing this direction but it's all gonna be the same stuff, right? So we're gonna straighten the front leg, step the back foot a little closer, feet are about hip distance apart, um, and we really wanna work the base of this pose. So we root down through the feet, we lift up through the quads, we try to level out the hips, and we're gonna to come to just basically a half forward fold. So we're never folding all the way down to like a pyramid where we just drape down. We're not going that deep. We're letting ourselves level out at 
flat back. And then see if you can bring both sets of fingers to the floor. Right would be inside the left foot, and then the left is outside the left foot. And then reach your head away from the tail, root through the back heel. And if you need to check with your left hand that your tail is pretty level, see what's going on back there. And then to take the revolve, basically we just pick the left fingers up off the floor and turn open. Revolve half moon, the fingers come forward and we take the weight to them, lean off the back foot and float it up. Try to get it as high as the hip and I know you can't see, right? But that's the goal. So kind of lift it as high as it will go, really. The hips are gonna level out here if you can get that leg pretty high. And then coming to regular half moon. So try to keep your leg in the air, keep it extended, take your left fingers to the floor. And again, if you're using the block, you'll have to trade the hand that is on the block. Take your right hand to your hip as you start to turn open, push through the heel, and then maybe that top arm moves up. Transitioning while balancing, it's not easy, but boy, is it really, you know, it's beneficial in terms of just your body gaining the ability to balance. And then bend your front knee, reach for the back of the mat, warrior two, inhale, reverse warrior, and then give yourself an extended side, forearm to the thigh, top arm over, head alongside the ear with the palm facing down. Breathe. Inhale, reverse it, and exhale, vinyasa. Hold and breathe. All right, let's step the right foot in a little bit. A little bit, so maybe I would say a third of the way. Move your shoulders forward over the wrists. Lift up out of your shoulders. So notice all the play you have. You could drop down, it almost feels like the elbows are gonna bend and you're gonna drop your chest to the floor. Or you can really straighten up the arms, push down and lift up out of the shoulders. We wanna be in that lifted up position. Take your left leg into the air and then a couple little hops. Floating yourself up, hopefully not flipping yourself over and then come back to downward facing dog, breathe. Let's do the other leg. So step the left foot in, shoulders over wrists, lift up out of the shoulders, take the right leg into the air, straight. So the top leg is completely straight. Don't bend that top knee. The bottom knee's gonna bend because it's kicking you up off the floor. Notice if one side is easier than the other. Usually we have a dominant side. And then walk the feet back, downward facing dog. And let's take knees to the floor, hips to the heels. All right, another little interlude. Let's play a little bit with handstand. So if you wanna just keep doing what we just did, that is definitely one way to play with handstand. If you feel confident to practice against a wall and you have a wall handy, then that is the next step in what we were just doing. So I'm gonna demonstrate that. Now, my wall is like <laughs> this tiny area between my windows, so I don't have a ton of wall space, so I'm gonna have to be a little careful. But if you have a bigger wall space, it will be a little bit easier. Um, the way you'll approach it is the exact way that we just approached this practice, so I'll show you that first. Your fingers will be a few inches away from the wall, so six to eight, so you don't want your fingers right at the baseboard. It might seem like you would, but actually what happens is if you kick up, you're more likely to kind of ricochet yourself back off if you're that close to the wall. You want to have a little space. Um, and then it's the same exact technique. You're pressing the palms down to lift up out of the shoulders. You're moving to kind of a narrow down dog. One foot is going to come in. That's the kickoff leg. And then the other leg is going to lift. This is the swing leg and it's trying to reach for the wall. Um, unless you're more advanced, in which case you some, some people can jump both feet up together, but you're not trying to get the second leg to meet the first one until that first one's already at the wall. So you'll just take a couple little jumps. Once that top leg hits the wall, then the second one can start to float back up and you'll use your core to bring that second leg up. 
So I'm going to turn to my wall and we're just, I'm just going to practice it twice, one, once using each leg. So I recommend trying on both sides. One is usually easier than the other. So we want to build the strength on both of them. Do the best you can here. And again, if you want to just practice in the center of the room, great. Or if you want to just come to your back and take your legs up for a couple of minutes, that's also a great inversion practice to do. All right, so for me, my feet, my hands are a little away from the wall. I'm gonna to come to this little down dog shape. Chest back, I'm gonna lift up, I'm gonna move my shoulders over my wrist, but lift up out of them. Walk my right foot a little closer, take the left leg up, and then I'm gonna to try to swing the left leg. That lever is gonna help pull me up. The bottom leg is hopping, and it might take a couple of tries, and then the legs come, the heels come, come to the wall. And if you're just practicing and you're not getting up, don't worry. It can take months of practicing before your body will go up, or you might find you just get up on the first try. So everyone's a little different. Take it at your own pace, and then come down as gently as you can. You will eventually come down when you go up, so get used to coming down gently, taking yourself down easy. Make sure you can catch yourself. Please don't fall and hit your knees or drop onto your head, because that's, that's no fun at all. We want yoga to stay fun and feeling good. I'm gonna do the other side real quick. And this side is usually my more challenging side, so we'll see if I make it. Maybe not. Nope. So I feel like if I practiced that side, that's, that's enough for me, right? So we wanna practice both sides, even if one is more likely to get you up and then let it, let it go if it doesn't work out, no problem. Let's go ahead and take Padahastasana. So wherever you wanna be on your mat, standing forward fold, one at a time, slide the palms under your feet, toes to the wrists. Wiggle the toes into the wrist, let the head hang down. Breathe. And let the hands come out from underneath your feet. And let's roll up to standing. Take the shoulders back. Take the feet out wide. Prostrate to Padottanasana here. So we'll do just a little bit more stuff standing. Outer edges of the feet parallel to the outer edges of the mat. Just a simple standing forward fold here. Hands to your waist. Come on down. Once you get about halfway down, take your hands down, maybe between the feet, lean the weight forward toward the balls of the feet, elbows over the wrists, let the head hang, lift the quads. And then root down to rise back up. We're gonna turn the right toes forward we're gonna bend into the front knee and come, this is warrior two, and then we're gonna take this to bound extended side. So the right forearm's gonna come back to the thigh, but the left arm, instead of going overhead, it's gonna come behind the back, and you're gonna try to reach for the top of your right thigh with that left hand. This is a half bind, and this is um, a, great where, a great place to practice. You can hold onto your thigh and then try to open your left shoulder towards the ceiling. If you want to take a full bind, you're going to drop your right forearm's going to come off your thigh and you're going to drop your right shoulder in front of your knee. Now, make sure you haven't snugged your hand inside your leg there. So then you're going to take your left hand all the way behind you, reach the right hand under your thigh and try to clasp the hands. Lift the top shoulder, open the chest. Stay here in a full bind, or if you're feeling like taking bird of paradise, you'll look to your right foot carefully step the left foot up to the front of the mat toes forward float up keeping your bind so your hands are connected behind your back holding on to that leg come on up move your shoulders back head up heart forward and then reach through the leg push through the heel to extend your lifted leg and then bend the knee 
step it back down, and we're going to come out of it the way we went in. So step back with the left foot, your back in your bound extended side, lift the top shoulder, and then at the end here, maybe straighten your bottom leg a little for a bound triangle. You can do this with a half bind as well. Release your bind. Woo. Stretch up and back. And let's, we're not going to take a vinyasa here. We're just going to take another forward fold. Hands to waist. Take yourself down. And this time, let's go ahead and reach for the big toes. First two fingers between the big toe and second toe and then underneath. And the same thing on the other side. So the palms are like facing each other. So we're not grabbing the fronts of the toes, we're grabbing the insides, the inner edge. And then pull up on the toes, reach the head away, and then pulling yourself down by bending the elbows, fold deeper, lift your quads, lean forward, head hangs down, breathe. And then let go of your toes, root the feet down to come up, and let's go the other way. So finding our bind, we're just going to turn the left toes forward, front heel and back arch line up, arms out, bend into the front knee, and forearm to the thigh. So just starting with that simple half bound extended side, the right hand comes behind the back and reaches for the top of the left thigh, and then you can open here. And if this is where you want to stay, you're just going to stay and hold here for a few breaths until we choose to go to like that bound half triangle. If you're coming to a full bind, you can drop your left shoulder down, get that left, that right hand to grasp your left hand, and we're wrapping underneath your thigh. Lift your top shoulder. Again, you can stay. If you want to move to Bird of Paradise, carefully step your right foot forward. It might take a couple steps. That's okay if it does. Float yourself up. Trying to find the alignment of the body before we worry too much about that lifted leg. So straighten your standing leg, move the shoulders over hips, head up on top of the neck, gaze forward, and then flex your left foot, push through the heel, and extend it up and away. Breathe. This is a balance pose, but it's about more than just that. Go ahead and start to take that foot back down to the floor. Step the right foot back to come out. And then if you want to, straighten up the front leg, come to your bound triangle version. Opening to the ceiling. And then let go with the hands. Float up and back. And let us take a vinyasa this time. So take your hands down to the floor. Step yourself to plank. Chaturanga. Up dog, and good old downward facing dog. Hold and rest. Let's set up for a pigeon stretch here, which we might really like, because it's more passive. Let's take the right leg into the air, open the hip and bend the top knee, point the knee to the sky. Root the hands down, and then slowly move that right knee forward so it ends up behind the right wrist. Shin across the mat. Use the left toes to help guide the left leg back so you're really on top of your thigh and not sitting on your foot at all. Extend the back foot. If you need to do this on your back, of course, if it's bothersome for your knee here, please feel free. Avoid rocking to your right hip, but you could use a block if that would help you. And then start to walk yourself down. Forearms to the floor. And at some point you feel like, okay, well, those forearms are there, but I am just continuing to sink. Let me walk those hands and arms out. Get the forearms out of the way. Maybe the head comes to the floor. Maybe even the chest. Give up the weight of the body to the floor.
and then slowly walking the hands in to come up. Let's take a nice stretch for the back thigh. So bend the left knee, reach back with the left hand for the foot, draw that heel towards the hip. If you want to flip the hand over and press down, you can do that. Try not to take too much weight on that front hand though, so maybe thinking of getting the shoulders up. And then if you can take the hand off the floor, you can play here, or you could move to mermaid, sliding the foot into the crook of the back elbow, taking that top arm up and behind and clasping the fingers. And release hands carefully to the floor back to down dog shake out the right leg here or kick through the heel we're seeing that all up side two take the left leg into the air open the hip bend the top knee point the knee to the sky and then we're gonna move that knee forward behind the left wrist let the shin move across your mat use the right toes to help you get that right leg to move back Moving to the top of your thigh. Try not to rock to your left hip. All the same old story. If you need to come to your back, go ahead and do that. And then folding down and we'll just stay and breathe for a little bit here. Coming up carefully, let's work the right quad, left fingers just hang in here to hold you up as you bend your right knee, reach back with the hand for the foot, draw the heel towards the hip. You can flip that elbow if that's available to you, pressing down, moving your heel towards your hip. Um, but then try not to take too much weight on that front hand and see what you can manage. So if for you it's just like, oh, picking it up for a second and putting it back down, that's where you're at. Work there. If you can start to bring it up for a little longer, maybe you have to bring it back down, but maybe you can keep it up. Maybe that um, foot can come into the crook of the elbow. So I know everyone's in a different place and you should be where you're at. But, you know, maybe challenge yourself to just go in the direction of that next thing as long as it's not like causing you pain, right? Don't hurt yourself. And then carefully let that go, hands to the floor, and back to down dog, shaking out your left leg or kicking your heel, just to let it go. <laughs> and let's come forward to plank, and we're going to lower down, lower all the way to your belly. Let's take a little bit of bow pose here. So this is going to be our back bend practice for today. So bend those knees, reach back with the hands for the tops of the feet. Try not to let the knees go too wide. Lift, lift the shoulders, press down with the, like the hips and the pelvis, and then pull the heels away from the hips, maybe let the, the thighs rise. And let yourself come on down, forehead or an ear to the floor. Um, we're going to do one more, and then we're going to do a little shoulder stretch here across the front of the shoulder, which will also be a little bit of a twist for our torso. Um, so I'm going to actually move to a better position on my mat, but um, we'll take one more bow pose first, though. So bend your knees, reach back with the hands for the feet. Challenge yourself to stay at least five to seven breaths. Press down to lift up. So we have to have something to push down into to lift up. Um, and that really is, we're pushing our hips into the floor, but then we're also pulling the heels away from the hips, and that's pulling our shoulders back and giving us some leverage to stay, get and stay up. Make sure you can still breathe. And then when you're ready to come down, release it easily. 
And we're gonna do a little shoulder stretch. So this is gonna be for the fronts of the, like the head of the shoulders. We're gonna take that right arm out, but try to keep your elbow, I'm actually gonna slide over a little so it's a little more visible. Elbow level with the shoulder. So not up here, right? But the elbow is bent and the forearm is like, well, it's lined up with the side of my mat. And then we wanna let the right shoulder drop and the right ear drop. And then the left hand, presses down and we're gonna roll backwards to the right. So we're gonna pick up the left leg, step it behind, and we can let that left shoulder lift. Step the foot behind you so that you get a stretch across the front of the right shoulder, and then that left arm maybe comes up and reaches back. And then returning, the left hand down, roll. And for me, I all of a sudden feel like a lot of heat in this arm. Um, we, you know, you bring blood flow to that area when you do something like this. I'm gonna come back onto my mat. So this time the left arm. So again, elbow straight out from the shoulder. And I know it's a little hard to see in the framing of the video, but we're creating a 90 degree angle. So with the 90 degree angle from the torso to the upper arm and then a 90 degree angle from the upper arm to the forearm, if that makes sense. Left ear and shoulder come down, right hand presses, and that hand is just gonna help move you to that twisted position where the right leg can step behind you. Maybe the foot comes to the floor, but it's okay if it doesn't, it doesn't have to. But we're just allowing the whole weight of the body to roll back over that one arm to stretch the front of it. And you could keep your right hand here, or you can take it up and let it lean back. As it leans back, it's just adding a little more weight and a little more depth. If your arm is leaning back, notice if you tend to jut your shoulder forward and just let the arm go back. The idea with the arm leaning back is that it's still attached to the shoulder. And so as the shoulder also moves back, we're opening the chest and stretching the front of the left shoulder. Ooh, this might feel a little intense and then come out of it. I mean, it's a simple pose, it's passive, but we can get a deep stretch there. Come out and let's go ahead and move back to child's pose. So really let's just move the hips all the way to the heels and take a breather here. Maybe flip the palms up and place the hands on the shoulders now. and come on up to your knees. And we're gonna finish up really simply. So just go ahead and come to a seat. We're gonna take a little seated twist and then we'll do Johnny Shirshasana. So we'll take the right leg out. Um, well, this is gonna be the extended leg first and we'll start with the twist. So we'll take the left leg and step it all the way over and then grab your um, left knee with your right elbow or take your elbow past your knee and turn to the left. The left fingers can be behind you And then coming out of that, and I'm kind of at a weird angle uh, on the mat just to stay in frame. So you could be like on the long end of the mat so you can sit on it. Uh, but then we're going to take the sole of the left foot to the inner thigh and just drop that knee open. If you want to take a half lotus here, you certainly can. Angle the body toward the right leg and fold down towards it. Keep the right foot flexed so this leg should still be toned on the top. And we're just stretching really just the hamstring on the right.
And then walk your hands in, come on up, and we'll just simply do the other side. So you can take your left leg out um, and step the right leg over for the twist to get started, turning over your right shoulder. Maybe use your left elbow for a little leverage there. Back fingers help to lift your spine up so you're staying lengthened. And then untwist, place your right foot, and then turn over your left leg and fold. So we moved through a lot of standing poses today, some more challenging, some, some tricky transitions. So these finishing poses are really just to allow you to transition now to something more resembling stillness. Forward folds can help to calm you, so feel free to close your eyes and focus inward. And then make your way back up and let's just cross the legs. And I encourage you at the end of this practice to come down to your mat and take a Shavasana for a full stillness for maybe five minutes, even 10, as long as you like, as long as feels good to you. Really just let your body recuperate and restore and resign its effort. For now, let's take palms together in front of the heart, close the eyes. Notice your breath, the light in me recognizes and honors the light in you wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining me from home and sharing in your practice. Namaste. Hey. Please feel free to share or leave any comments, or if you have questions or concerns, I'm always willing to, you know, check it out and answer and do the best I can for you. I appreciate you being here. It's, it's just a delight to have people practicing with me as I practice at home. Yay!